G'day guys, Mr Oz Adventure here once more and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the workplace I used to live in and some of the practical jokes we used to get up to. Some of them were quite nasty, some of them were funny, some of them were absolutely disgusting. I'm sure you get a laugh out of most of them so let's go on this ride back 20 odd years and I'll tell you all about it. So as I was saying in the previous video, I used to work on cars as a panel beater in smash repair industry. You'd be in a workshop with a lot of guys and a lot of these guys were quite feral. So in the workshop I worked in when I did my apprenticeship, there was, there was quite a lot of tomfoolery. Some of them included putting dog poo in other people's toolboxes, which of course was paid back by putting human poo in the pocket of overalls and also human poop in the spray gun of a spray painter so this this other panel beater that I worked with he took another guy's spray gun in to the toilet and he had a crap in it and then put it back on the guy's bench hung it up so that when he went in the next morning to go and paint his next job he went to fill it up with paint he opens the lid and there's this dirty big crap in there <laughs> and this was payback for putting dog poo in this guy's toilet in his toolbox uh, and this this went on backwards and forwards a couple of times <laughs> yeah it ended up with the the poop in the overalls as well and that stunk out the whole overall room we'd have this room where all the overalls were hung up at the end of the day and you would get changed in there and there's quite a bit of a stench in there the next morning and there's, there's this poop in, <laughs> in the squashed into the back pocket of the overalls uh, other practical jokes i had played on me at this workshop was one day I came in and I found my toolbox, we had these, these toolbox trolleys on wheels and I found my toolbox had moved. Oh, why is it over there? So I go and grab it and try to move it and someone had welded it to the workbench and I couldn't move it so I had to get the grinder out and, and uh, undo the weld so I could move my toolbox. So I found out who that was. I got them back by putting windscreen sealer which is thick black gooey stuff all through their toolbox that took them forever to get that out of their toolbox it was a mess they had to use paint thinners to, to get it all out it was uh, quite, a, quite a mess so then I got paid back for that um, I got into work one day and all my sockets had, you know your sockets for your ratchet your tool kit all my sockets were linked up with welding wire so they put out, pulled out their MIG welding wire and just routed it through all my sockets so that when I pulled, filled up, picked up one socket the whole lot of them came they are all stuck together that must have taken him ages to do some of the other ones got a bit nasty it, it sort of escalated there for a little bit I ended up putting some body filler in one guy's hair he just pissed me off one day and I thought no fuck you that's pissed me off can't remember what he did but I was just walking past mixing up body filler at the time and I just slapped a bit in his hair so I think he had to get a haircut after that. One other time I was working on a truck and I heard someone called my name I turned around to get this ham and pickle sandwich slapped in the side of my face. It went in my ear and everything, it was just right in my ear, this, all this pickle. Another time I was working on the same truck, I think it might have been the next day or something, you know this guy we were getting each other backwards and forwards. I think I got pulled out some female lipstick out of a car and, and slapped it in his ear. So he had um, lipstick all over his face and jammed right in his ear. But another time I'm working on the truck and yeah, he was on top of the truck and I was down below on the bottom of the truck. He calls my name and I look up just in time to see this huge big green spit coming down out of his mouth and just landed on the side of my face. I couldn't get out of the way in time. That was just bloody horrible absolutely disgusting uh, another thing that happened was um, I had a, a, a quite nice car at the time a bit hotted up and I had chrome exhaust tips hanging out the back of it and someone decided to paint them black so that took me a bit of, it took me a while to get that off so I got the, the paint out and he had a jet ski at work that he owned and so I painted the side of his jet ski fucker he was pissed off at that wasn't he it was okay, okay for him to do something to me but when I did it back to his vehicle you know, he did it to my car, I did it back to his jet ski. <laughs> he had to cut and polish that to get that off. <laughs> Took him ages. He wasn't happy though, very pissed off. Now there are all sorts of other 
practical jokes that we used to play on apprentices. I tr they tried to play them on me when I was an apprentice, but I didn't fall for any of them. But I saw quite a few other people fall for them. You'd get asked for, to go to like a neighbouring place and they were in on the joke and you'd get asked to go and get a long wait off them. And of course the, pre the apprentice didn't know what a long wait was. And so they'd go over there and ask this other workshop for the long wait. And they'd oh, just, just sit there in the waiting room there and I'll, I'll go and get it for you. The apprentice would be waiting, waiting, waiting for a long time, you know, because it is a long wait. And uh, eventually they'd be told, yes, you've had your long wait, you can go back now. And most would go, oh. But there was one kid who was just, yeah, but I still didn't get the long wait, where's that? And it had to be explained to him, he was a bit thick, that kid. And uh, yeah, the tins of elbow grease, the left-handed screwdriver, going and checking the water on a Volkswagen, which of course in those days were air-cooled, so they didn't have radiators with water in them. When I was working on pine furniture, there was, um, before I was a panel beater, there was a few practical jokes played there too. One kid, we, we got the forklift and we lifted his bicycle up and we, we tied it to the roof. And uh, he, he's come back from his lunch break or whatever and didn't even notice his bike was missing. At the end of the day, he's gone to ride home. Where's my bike? <laughs> Everyone's laughing. He finally looks up and there's his bike stuck to the roof. And of course, the forklift's been taken back to where it belongs. So he couldn't get it down. <laughs> He was not happy about that. There were actually some cruel jokes played on, on kids in that place too. We had these big dust, dust extraction bags on this sander. Got this kid in there to clean it out. So he's inside of it with uh, a brush, brushing out the dust, which was just a ludic ludicrous sort of thing to do anyway. But no, he went inside and he did it. And as soon as he got in there, everyone's beat on the side with bits of wood and all this dust just flew down all over his head and just absolutely coated him. He came out head to toe in dust. <laughs> he couldn't even see his face. It was bloody hilarious and uh, he took it well though. <laughs> there was another kid who, um, oh, I can't remember what the practical joke I played on him was. I think I might have shot him with a nail gun and he chased me with a claw hammer trying to hit me. He was a bit of a psycho. He'd put some of the lollies in his butt crack and then put them back in the bag and then gave them to this guy. And while this guy is eating his lollies, 